بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Now Allah Almighty is the most generous and there is a beautiful form that is used to describe that generosity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a bountiful generosity there are many words in Arabic to describe that. One of them is Kareem, you know that, which is generous. But there is one, Dhul Fadl and Dhul Fadl al -Azim. The one who has bounties, and bounties with generosity, with bountiful things. And then this is called the magnificent form of generosity and bountiful generosity. That is the concept of Fadl. So probably we'll use this word instead of saying just generosity and so on. Now uh, this is repeated in the Holy Quran often and often. And it is mentioned as a blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glad tiding from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the believers that Allah Almighty will grant them this. It was included among the dua of righteous people often and often again. So what is the concept of this bountiful generosity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Simply, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be generous with you, but beyond your imagination, much more than you might ever think. Because Allah Almighty is magnificent. And when He Himself says about the bountiful being magnificent, you can only imagine how big is it. When someone is describing something, as huge and big and bountiful and so on your imagination goes as far as the ability of that person isn't it when a child tells you I'm going to give you a magnificent gift that you have never received in your life it could be just a beautiful paper with I love you dad for example right or just a little lollipop or some sweet this is according to his ability this is something that is great when someone of a higher position tells you, your imagination goes further. Your employer tells you that, your imagination goes much further. Now a leader or an extremely wealthy person tells you that, your imagination stretches. And so when Allah Almighty says that, your imagination cannot even conceive that. And this beautiful concept is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala usually says, Al-Fadl Al-Azim, magnificent and major and huge. Because you can never imagine it. You can never imagine even portions of that in paradise. As the Messenger وسلم, mentioned, Allah Almighty prepared in it what no eye has ever seen and no ear has ever heard and no imagine has ever conceived. Not even the imagination. Now, the believers actually are happy with this pleasure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this promise from Allah Almighty. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them in the Holy Quran, let them rejoice and be happy with the pleasure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the bountiful generosity from Allah Almighty. There are two aspects of that. One of them in this world, which is providing you with the Holy Quran and the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the guidance. Allah Almighty says, this is better than everything that they accumulate and gather in this world. Everything. Simply having that is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For sure. Because the rewards for it, the effects for it will continue forever. The second aspect is, after understanding that, the second aspect of bountiful rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and generosity is that Allah Almighty is going to return to you every single good deed that you have done, but multiplied. And this multiplication, the minimum from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the minimum is tenfold. This is the bare minimum. But that is only the beginning of multiplications. Because after that, the Messenger وسلم, said up to 700 folds and more. When Allah Almighty mentioned this in the Holy Quran, He says up to 700, after the description, 700. And Allah Almighty increases and multiplies for whomsoever He wishes. And Allah Almighty is the widest in giving and in generosity. And He is knowing about your intention and sincerity and so on. That is why you get the, these rewards. 
So here, how many folds you don't know, but just an example, even if it is just the 700, you didn't get anything more. So if you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 1,000 only, Allah Almighty might reward you for it as 700,000 or more. A number probably you could never have in your life. And imagine more and more. So how do you get the bountiful rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He's going to give you your rewards in full, multiplied, and increase you. That is the concept of fadl from Allah Almighty. But how do you guarantee that you will get that? Allah Almighty described for us in the Holy Quran the reasons or the means of getting that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First and foremost, obedience to Allah Almighty and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Almighty says as those who obey Allah Almighty and the Messenger, there will be with those upon whom Allah Almighty has favored or blessed. And then Allah Almighty mentioned the prophets, the messengers, the martyrs, etc. Allah Almighty then says, So that is great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because no matter how much you try, no matter what you do, you will never reach the status of prophets or messengers or righteous people and chosen people by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, isn't it? So it will be a blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bounty. A second thing is holding on to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most important thing is what Allah Almighty wants from you, which He already told you about. Where did He tell you about that? He told you about them in the Holy Quran. Clearly, isn't it? So to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to get closer to Him, the best thing you have to do is to what? Follow His orders, follow His book. So that is why holding to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is one of the greatest things that will grant you that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing is istighfar and tawbah. Increase your istighfar and tawbah. The concept about istighfar and tawbah is beautiful. Because the idea is not only Allah Almighty will remove the sin from you, purify you from the sins and wrongdoings. And thus it will not have any bad effect upon you, neither in this world nor in the hereafter. This by itself is a great blessing. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned other things, other benefits of istighfar, and there are many. One of them is that Allah Almighty will grant you from His fadl and favor and blessings. Means in this world and in the hereafter, not only in the hereafter, but even in this world. And istighfar and tawbah will grant you that, inshallah. The other aspect after that, or the other reason or means of getting the fadl from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to increase your good deed. Increasing good deed and the, any good deed you do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you inshallah the pleasure of Allah Almighty and the fadl from Allah Almighty. But there are some that stand out and Allah Almighty mentions some of them. For example, the pillars of Islam. This is the most important thing to do or to pay attention to. Prayers, zakah, fasting and hajj for those who are able. Holding on to the pillars. Allah Almighty mentioned this reality in the Holy Quran for those who believe and those who do, do, do righteousness. After Allah Almighty mentioned that, He mentioned the details of them. People who stay in the, in the houses of Allah Almighty. They are not deceived, not deviated by the trade, the business, and the play. So outside, nothing. Whether it is a serious thing or a play. Whether it is for profit or a waste of money and time. They are not taken away from worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by these things. They remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He mentioned. So this, they, this does not keep them away from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and establishing prayer and paying the zakah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned at the end, Allah Almighty will reward them in full and increase them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase him from his fadl, from his bountiful generosity. Uh, another one is the recitation of the Holy Quran. We said before holding on and understanding and following, the recitation of the Holy Quran is also something very important. Someone who loves something, he will increasingly mention it. True? You could see people who, for example, they love some quotes and they keep repeating these quotes often and often. They love a personality and they keep mentioning him or her. They love a song and they keep humming with the same sounds on tune and so on. This is all right. So those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their pride and their pleasure is in reciting the word for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and listening to it. And that is why usually you cannot combine 
the wasteful things uh, and, and the Holy Quran together. People who listen to songs, for example, and music and so, they usually do not tolerate to listen to the Holy Quran. So when they pass through any Holy Quran channel or something, they immediately switch. Or turn, switch to another one, or turn it off. Or they keep themselves busy with something else. They cannot. And the other way around. People who love to listen to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Holy Quran, they find it very difficult to listen to music and songs. So usually the scholars say these two things can almost never exist in the house of a person together. One of them is going to take the other away. So which one do you want to take the other away? So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned reciting the Holy Quran often and often. When Allah Almighty mentioned those who recite the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, then he mentioned the salah and the zakah, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he will grant them their rewards in full as well as increase them from fadl as well. The last two things we will mention them very quickly. The first one is about seeking halal rizq and halal income. This is one of the greatest way to get fadl and reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam is a practical religion, so it's not theory only. So even going in life and working and studying and searching, all of that is rewardable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The beautiful thing is about it, seeking halal income is rewardable. And you need to do that with determination and walk, walking around and searching. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned after finishing the salah, when he spoke about, uh, we are talking about the obligatory salah of Jumu'ah. He says, when you finish that, then go around and search for the rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walk around the earth, search for the rizq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Muslim is a positive person in the society. He's not a negative person. He's a positive person. So he goes for and he is uh, ambitious and uh, he goes forward, he initiates things and starts them. So these uh, elements are very important and rewardable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah Almighty mentioned that, he said, and seek fadl from Allah Almighty. Seek the bountiful generosity from Allah Almighty. So how do you seek it? By sleeping, by sitting, by being lazy, by not doing anything, by not taking initiatives. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you cannot do that. What you need is... After finishing your obligation towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ibadah and salah, go and practice your duty, the other duty. So doing that is a form that will inshallah get you the bountiful rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world and the hereafter. The other one is limited to, uh, linked with that which is spending in, on goodness and in righteousness and helping the others. Something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a lot. Allah Almighty blessed you with something, what is it might be? If you can share with others, do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you and Allah Almighty will increase you. Allah Almighty promised anyone who spent anything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and goodness that he will compensate him with that and increase him. So take that a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is a real life situation you can see it around you. People who spend more in charity are usually more blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and living a better life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the believers they do share and give all the time even if they are themselves in a difficult situation. They will continue to do that. So that, that concept is something that will give you inshallah the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, keep in your mind that Allah Almighty promised you two things. Allah Almighty promised the believers two main things. The first one, Allah Almighty promised you forgiveness. Those who share with others, those who help others, Allah Almighty promised that He will forgive them. So one of the best way to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to help the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and all living things. The second thing, Allah Almighty promised you bountiful rewards. So simply, by abiding by these elements, inshallah, you will guarantee that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, will reward you greatly and increase you and will give you bountiful rewards, inshallah, out of His generosity and mercy. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, inshallah, to be among those who remember Him often and those who follow His pleasure and those who do everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of sincerity and love for Allah Almighty and expecting great rewards and bountiful rewards from Allah Almighty. Ameen wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, one la uh, last point uh, the, uh, which is uh, linked to another topic that we discussed very briefly which is out of the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is a wisdom that when Allah Almighty put people on this earth 
he differentiated between them and rizq. So some people were giving extra rizq in one part, and others were given extra rizq on a different part. Some were given extra money, some were given extra health, extra ability, extra strength, extra uh, knowledge, mind power, and so on, thinking, good family, offspring. Allah Almighty differentiated the abilities and characteristics of people, and this is for wisdom. Because Allah Almighty, as He said, we made you serve one another. The idea is there is no single human being on earth no matter what he has and who he is on earth, no matter what ability, what knowledge, whatever you might think, he is in need of other people. None can exist by himself. You need people to sew your cloth, you need people to prepare your food or to grow it or to bring it to you, you need people to give you medicine when you are sick, you need people to educate your children, you need people to build a house for you, be able to build a car for you, build machines for you, uh, serve you at home. Even if you are the most wealthy person, you still need people. You need even a plumber to fix your uh, sewage, for example, when it broke. You need every single person on earth. So people keep, everybody is serving everybody else. Every single person on earth is serving somebody else, directly or indirectly. This is a reality in life. Now, if you are being served by anyone, you need to pay attention because in Islam there are rights and duties. So there are rights for people who are serving you. And the most important out of all of them, as the Messenger وسلم, mentioned, treat him as a brother. The Messenger وسلم, said, your servants are your brothers. SubhanAllah. So, feed them from what you eat. Give them the exact same food quality, portioning, types, etc. duration. Exact. And clothe them from what you wear yourself. Equal. The same quality and time. And, 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 and comfort and dressing and so on. And do not order them to do anything. Do not order them to do anything that is difficult for them. And if you do order them to do something that is difficult for them, then help them yourselves. Share with them the burden. SubhanAllah. These are the exact words of the Messenger SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when Allah Almighty put someone in charge of someone else, it does not mean that you take advantage of that. This is not the truth. In fact, you need to realize he's a human being, just like you. He get tired, he get bored, he get sick, he, he is overwhelmed sometimes, he is not in the mood sometimes to serve or work and so on. You need to take all of that into consideration when dealing with them. You are not allowed to belittle them, you are not allowed to insult them, you are not allowed to curse them, you are not allowed to hit them. All of these are forbidden in Islam entirely. The Messenger وسلم, one day, so one of the Sahaba hit hitting his servants. So the Messenger وسلم, walked to him and he says, Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more strength over you than you have over him. What are you going to answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then? Just because you are in charge, you are taking advantage, you are mistreating. So what do you expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah Almighty is just. So he said, O Messenger of Allah, I seek forgiveness from Allah Almighty. He is free for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger وسلم, said, By Allah Almighty, if you hadn't freed him, Allah Almighty, would the, the hellfire would have touched you. It would have been punished by hellfire. One of the Sahaba. Yes, you are not allowed to hit people or belittle them. So you need to take that into consideration all the time. And furthermore, we conclude with that, inshallah, which is give them their due right as soon as they finish work. You're not allowed to delay their payment, delay their salary. This is not allowed in Islam. His salary is due, his payment is due, you have to give it to him as soon as possible. You're not allowed to delay. The Messenger Sallallahu said, give your employee, whoever, give your employee his due before his sweat dries. He finished the work. Within a few minutes, he's going to cool down, right? 
Then Sayyidina Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you are allowed this much gap. One minute, two minutes, three minutes, maximum me. Yeah? This is how long it will take usually. You are allowed this little gap only. It's not allowed beyond that. It's haram. So we need to understand that when we are seeking bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to be careful not to displeasure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to cause to anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to do something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love. We need to appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with and take good care of it and treat people uh, in manners that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward it for them. Ameen wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.